nice to see you in this forum. Uh, and uh, I will uh, I will give a, try to give a description on on a little bit about my background and how we got started with Dr. Dottesi and my journey. And I know there's going to be some Q and A's at the end, so it's a little bit difficult. What, what what's going to be the most interesting to you to understand whether it's going to be how we started, where Dr. Dottesi is right now, or my view on 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 the market space, or just my view of being an entrepreneur and and, and start these things. So bear with me and and hope you find this interesting, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll see where we can land with things. But uh, anyhow, I'm the CEO and one of the founders of Dr. Dottesi. Uh, I um, I got into the space about a little bit over ten years ago, where um, where I uh, I started my first clinic. Uh, I have no uh, medical background. I used to be uh, I actually I used to be a professional ice hockey player. Uh, I played in in Sweden for many years. I played in Europe for for over seven years, uh, and uh, played on the national team for Sweden. I played in the elite league and and. Uh, uh, it was quite an interesting journey, uh, and that led me all the way up to me coming back to uh, Sweden and playing for Jurgården here in Stockholm. Uh, I uh, I did that, and at the same time, I studied a little bit on the side. Uh, and after my career, and after that year, I, I I felt like my time as a hockey player was over. I was interested in other stuff. I started studying at the uh, business, Stockholm Business School. Uh, and I uh, started working at one of the financial banks here in, in Stockholm for a little bit. Um, didn't, didn't work so long before I got the opportunity to fund and uh, start the first clinic, and we did that in the county of Sörmla. Uh And uh, that was the opportunity where they changed the healthcare system in Sweden, so it, it was the first time it was a, a chance to be able as a private individual launch and uh, and run with a private clinic founded and and uh, paid for by the county. Uh, I did that for for several years and and one uh, clinic became five uh, in different regions around Sweden. Uh, got a fairly good idea of of how it was to run physical cl- uh, care in Sweden and how we. Uh, consume care in, as individuals in Sweden. And, uh, and the great challenge there is within healthcare industry that uh, to meet the demand for healthcare and then just having the, the, the ability to, to meet the ever ending demand for seeking healthcare. And you guys know as a population, we, we grow bigger uh, as individuals, we're, we're getting older and, and we're, we're seeking more healthcare than ever. So the equation in that it's that we're spending more money on healthcare, and uh, it, it's 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 a very it's a big challenge for the industry to to meet that demand in the future. And I'm not just talking about Sweden; I'm talking about Europe and and the world in general. Uh, I got very interesting and in, and uh, just involved with the whole idea of of making this environment and this industry somewhat better um, and in 2016 I met my co-founder Svante Tegner that has a, a long history within uh, retail started a company called Bubble Room uh, they were selling clothes online uh, Svante had no background within healthcare and, and, and knew very little about it but knew how to to change your market and how a market can change when you start talking about uh, digitalization uh, and we got talking about the effect of healthcare and what we could do, and that Sweden then at that time came out from uh, the um, the politics side and and the government and saying that Sweden will be the dominating world a, a country in the world on digital healthcare, and that the goal is set for 2025 that Sweden is going to be the world leading country and. Uh, we thought that uh, there's so much to do here and the idea was to uh, kind of interact with patients so they get an easier way into the healthcare but on the other end figure out a way so we can 
uh, meet the challenge of uh, how can we uh, can, how can we handle the great demand of healthcare and doing that on on a very cost efficient uh, way, uh, and just understanding that the 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 organization the industry has a limit amount of uh, nurses and doctors that can handle in the the vast uh, volume of patients. So we need to figure out a balance between those things, and that's what. That's what Dr. S is, and 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 you see here on the chart that uh, uh, how how we came about. I started the clinics, and then after that, we we launched a digital site. We got started in in the sum uh, in the, the beginning of 2017. Uh, we were at that time uh, two employees. Um, Svante wasn't even involved in, in, in the uh, in the organization at that time, so. So uh, um, very small, and uh, we got a fairly good idea on what we wanted to do. And and after that, it was just basically to figure out to put one foot in front of the other, and um, start recruiting tech people that can start developing that service and and the idea that we had, and then trying to uh, uh, get people involved in the project that knew, and figure out the balance between a tech company and an organization that still needs to be able to handle uh, a, a big volume of, phys, uh, of, of healthcare errands. Because at the end of the day, it's doctors and nurses treating people. And whether they are on our platform or not, if you become a healthcare provider, you still need to understand and figure those things out and have a, a service that can, that can do everything, both meeting and, and being a good platform for patients and customers. But at the same time, providing for the the um, staff members that's working for us, and then also very important to understand the landscape of the politics and the regionals decision on on our uh, functionality and what we can do within the scope of uh, the contracts that we got from the region. So, all in all, it was obviously a very hectic time. We. Uh, we built the uh, organization and the technology in 2017, and then we uh, we launched in the summer of um, of 2018. It was the first time we marketing our service. Up till then, we just we tested it at the end of 2017, and and we were running with it in the beginning of 2018 without making any noise or advertising. And then in the summer of 2018, we start getting out there and and and, and meeting patients and customers and and it took off and uh i have a little bit of a, a bragging picture here but this is this is how far we've come since then we 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 scaled very quickly and and up today we have a bit over a million downloaded apps we download about at this point it's it's more than that we see there it's it's a little bit over 1500 apps a day uh we treated about 700,000 errands so far. Uh, so, I mean, the increase in, in volume has been tremendous and, and, and it's been quite a journey. Uh, and what we do is is then understanding that we are a healthcare provider that managing a vast volume of patients, both digitally, obviously, because that's, that's, that's the key, but then also understanding that we need a kind of a, uh, the physical side as well, because we need to be able to handle all the calls coming in, and 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 at the, at how it is right now, we can handle about seventy percent of the the patients calling in on the digital side. But then we also want the patients to be able to seek healthcare through us and, and through Doctor Dot SC, and then we do that through our physical units that we're scaling very quick right now. And we also have uh, platform corporations. We uh, we just launched with uh, Brazil in July, and they uh, they hit the market um, like enormously well. To through to that uh, pandemic and and the situation that goes on in Brazil, so uh, uh, they seen an enormous increase in volume right now, and they're number one. They're the leading company. They're they called Vibe. And they're using our technology and our our um, platform and our app, uh, and then we do the same thing with the uh, uh, veterinarian site that's Anicura, and Anicura then it's it's one of the largest European veterinarian sites, and we're scaling in multiple countries with them, 
and they see in also an, an enormous uh, uptake in volume since uh, since they launched in, in, at the end of last year and and especially due now to the pandemic uh, you, you see that increase and here here's the picture that I like to show because a lot of people understand, want to know where we are as a company right now and we've been sitting back a little bit not sitting back in in increase and not that we're not aggressive we're like we're extremely aggressive in the growth but we've been focusing on Sweden and on the platform corporations because we thought that was a better scale for us in the beginning and the people I think that but you need to be international to make a dent in this market and yeah you will have to be sooner or later and and and, and we will as well but I love this picture because People think that as soon as you talk about Sweden, it's such a small country. But if you look at the volume that we see in healthcare, it, it's it's interesting to compare it to the global music industry and the go global film industry. And then you see just how big uh, healthcare in Sweden is. And 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 it took me a while to see this number and understanding that that's that that's the dif difference right now. But um, we will as well go international as i said we're already international so this picture is actually a little bit old now because in july we launched in brazil uh and the volumes that they see today they they will surpass us uh very uh very shortly uh, i would say i'm afraid but i'm not because the deal we have it's 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 actually it's, it's a joint venture so it's it's as we would be in brazil right now but we don't have an operational function and then with Anikura, they, they are in uh, two, and in the end of this month, they're going to be in three countries. And they have another two countries to launch uh, uh, this year. So, uh, and they are also owned by Mars Family. Uh, that's the world's leading uh, veterinarian, veterinarian site. So it's exciting. And we have quite a few of these negotiations right now when it comes to our platform. So I think for us, it's going to be difference that we're going to be very active and you know, in certain areas but at the same time we will have areas and markets that we won't be operational but we will be um we will be there because we have the technology and we have the knowledge and the platform to be able to scale very quickly and i think the structure that we set up is just basically knowing how can we handling as many patients as possible as cheap and affordable as possible and that's going to benefit patients that's going to benefit this benefit the system and is also going to benefit all the doctors nurses psychologists uh, that that's using and 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 meeting people on a day day to day basis so um, i tried to speed it up at the end but i think uh, that's that's the 15 minutes that uh, you were looking for and and i had my time to 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 mention a little bit where we are so uh uh, very interesting journey so far. We just got started. Uh, we scratched the surface, and and what we see more more important and more interesting right now. And at at the mid of uh, the pandemic, you see changes that are made on a regulatory basis uh, that are we're speeding up the tempo so fast that that, that what we've been doing for three years changed in Europe overnight or over a couple of weeks when the politics just went in and said this is what we need to do and uh, we, uh, we're we going to change this so we can uh, have digital healthcare all over the board and uh, we are we're going to jump at that and we feel very well prepared to be able to uh, be uh, more of a in the international scene going forward here so i'm 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 going to be um happy to come back and and give you an update on what we're doing and and how we're going to scale from here i i hope that's okay i i don't get any i see that you're writing a little bit it's time is difficult to speak and, and read at the same time but i think after this i'm going to go into a, a, a panel with some questions uh i think that's the way it's going to work I, I don't get any audio back but uh um i think that's the way it's going to be so so uh thanks for now and i think i'm going to answer it in a in a panel okay i don't know what panel i, I think i'm there's going to be a q and a after after
Okay. Let, let's let's maybe we should take some questions here that came up. Jason. Uh, okay. Okay, we got we got a question from Hannah there uh, regarding our our uh, entrance into Middle East and North Africa. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question, and and as I said, I think we're going to be somewhat venturing into these these areas and these these countries, um, but not necessarily on an operational level. Uh, each market and and each country has their own ecosystem, and it's difficult to understand exactly how that's going to work, but. Oh, I think we're going to pair up with with local entrepreneurs or local companies. It's going to look different in different markets, obviously. And we're already in discussion with these areas that you're talking about. So, in the near future, I think it's a possibility that we're going to be uh, uh, we're going to be part there. Uh, Gustav had a question as a new point. That's a good question too. I got to read it out out loud. As a new path to the traditional career path for doctors and nurses, how do you build company culture and tackle conservative stakeholders that question your path? Uh, yeah, that's that, that's that's core. I mean, you got to understand that we are a tech company, and we're scaling on the premises of being a tech co uh, company. So uh, the same functionality on understanding that that we need to buy and acquisit patients and customers, it's it's first priority and high priority. But at the same time, you can't you can't not understand the importance of building that consulting firm uh, firm or consulting organization because you need the doctors and nurses to be able to handle the volume. And if you don't, you you're gonna have an insufficient service, obviously. And that culture is key because at the end of the day, doctors are a scared resource. And if you can't attract the right people and the right doctors, you're not going to be able to scale because you're not going to be able to produce doctors elsewhere. You're not going to take them from another country and, and, and bring them into that, that market space that you need them. So you need to be able to be competitor on the, ski, the, the marketplace of, of attracting staff. So the balance between being an aggressive uh, tech company and at the same time uh, uh, have the environment that doctors that are maybe a, the, the stakeholders that you're talking about that are a little bit more conservative, they need to feel protected. They need to feel at ease in what you do. They need to feel that this is a, a very secure and professional organization that can handling healthcare errands. So, so perfect question and something that we work really, really hard at from day one. And I think it's going to pay dividends at the end. Um, Ulrika asked, would you call digital care equal care? Yeah, I, I would definitely do that. I mean, it's been a big discussion in the beginning that this, this caters to a younger population in the major cities to begin with. But any digital journey starts that way. Uh, we're going to understand who's the early adopters in, in a di digital revolution. So what we see today is not going to be the effect what we see in the next couple of years. And digital uh, healthcare is, is, is obviously there for everyone and even more so in the future. Uh, and the penetration of, of the smartphones and uh, mobile bank ID, is, it's, it's, it's everywhere and, and it's broad. So what, what's going to be the effect of digital care? It's going to be that more people, no matter their geographically boundaries, are going to be able to log in and seek health care where the health care exists. So as, as, as long as you don't need it, it, the, the initial consultation, the initial care can always be made in that digital, uh, in that digital forum. And that's going to help so many people. And then long term, we're going to see more and more um, monitoration of elderly, of chronic disease, of patients that have a, a fairly good idea about their own uh, um, their own disease or their own symptoms. 
So we can monetize, we can help them, you know, all the discussion and everything that comes out now when, it, when you look at variables. We're going to have so much information and, and what we can do and what the platforms need to do is, able, is being able to track and to sort that information so the patients get helped. Okay? Uh, how do you manage your payout to so many doctors? Uh, are they permanent employed? Well, when it comes to uh, uh, recruiting and hiring doctors, what we see over the last years and, and just before uh, digital healthcare, we saw a shift from uh, uh, hired staff to consultants. So, so we're shifting towards that the, the, the most of the doctors at this level are uh, their own uh, their own little companies and 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 consulting consulting. So, and that's the digital healthcare just scaling this up. And we see doctors that are working on multiple works. They they have they have physical. They digitally. They they they're working from home. They're working on the physical uh, unit. And 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 we're gonna see that shift even more. So. For us, it's just basic, basically billing hours. Uh, not that complicated. Um, okay. Let's see, do you always... Okay, I think I think I, I I answered most of it that I could I can uh, read or, or if there anyone that I missed here, there there there's there's quite a few. Please write it again. I'll answer it. Uh, I'll wait a couple of minutes here. Okay, that, uh, so Eric came in with a question. Uh, Psychology online versus pure healthcare. What will work best online? Uh, I, I say equal. Uh, I, we're going to see, and we already seen that. We seen uh, enorm, enormous uptake and uplift in uh, uh, mental illness uh, online, uh, like working with mental illness online. We also, as a society, see an enormous pickup. Unfortunately, when it comes to uh, mental illness. That's been over uh, the last decade, we've seen an enormous increase. And I think we're just going to see the after effect of the pandemic that's going to see even bigger volumes in that, unfortunately. But I think mo they equally work well. I mean, you got to understand that healthcare, whether it's a mental illness or, or, or regular healthcare, primary care, it's, it's, some is very... Uh, effective when it comes to digitally and some needs to be handled physically and what we do it's try to figure that out as quick as possible mm. if we store <laughs> if we store the information uh, digitally yeah we do to some extent I mean some extent we don't because we got to be very careful on, on how we we handling uh, data, both obviously uh, uh, get GDPR and and then also the journal. So, uh, <coughs> sorry, there's information that we do um, that we do uh, track and seek, and and we also have our digital nurse Elsa, uh, and and she's going to be smarter and more efficient as we go. So, uh, uh, definitely that that definitely a big part at the end that we can uh, track. Uh, uh, data, but but it's all also very. It's a balance. You need to be very careful what you do there. Um, okay. Clinical care is clinical care is heavily regulated with it within country or even state jurisdictions. How do you manage doctors providing advance across borders? Okay, that that's true. Uh, when you can when you talk about nation wise. You have the regions set up, and, and and that is not a geographic boundary that needs to be addressed when it comes to doctors uh, treating patients across the region boards. Uh, you can do that within the nation. Nation, uh, I, but I don't think that 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 was your question. I think you meant uh, international. 
And th that's definitely going to be a part that is going to be hard to scale our service and our organization to another country. You need to have your foot in your organization on that ground to be able to work within that ecosystem. So, uh, so you're definitely going to have to have uh, local na nation wise uh, uh, staff members to be able to handle the volume. Uh, okay, last question, John. There asked, uh, not U.S. or Canada. We're we're, we're looking into both uh, countries, obviously. Uh, the first one is a uh, discussion on uh, Anikura and on that pl platform organization. As I said, Anikura is owned by, by Mars family. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what Mars want to do now if they want to scale up and, and highly interesting with, with US. Uh, for us, foot on the ground ourselves, I wouldn't say necessarily that's our next step now. We have our eyes set on a couple of other uh, a couple of other markets. Registration board, yeah, yeah, uh, you're right. Uh, we're talking about going into U.S. It's it's fragmented. Uh, it, it it it's it's you, you kind of have to look at each uh, region or province you're, you're on because they have their own setup a little bit the way we do in Sweden. A lot of these barriers, geographic barriers, you can take away due to uh, a digital function. It's limitless when it comes to geographic boundaries, and as long as you can treat people over these boundaries, you're you're that's okay. Uh, but sometimes you have restrictions and you can't. So I wouldn't say U.S. be the next one that we venture into. We have a couple of other markets that we have our eyes set on ourselves. Cool. I, I'll. Uh, it looks like uh, we're. Uh, I, I'll. I'll. I'll do one more question. Then. Then. Uh, okay. I'll do two. Then. then. There's. There's. There's a bunch of questions coming in here. But. But. Uh, I, I'll. Uh, fortunately, I also have to. To get going. And even though I'd like to have these chats. Uh, uh, the main country's healthcare system. Of Okay, Thomas uh, asked a question, how we can be a part of the solution when it comes to long-lasting uh, cues, uh, care change from visit to your local doctor, to getting a, a planned treatment at the hospital. Uh, yeah, sure, that's a little bit what I was into, and I think our system is good at what Dr. Dottesi is, most of all, is a triage. And I think long-term, we're going to develop that even more. So running with being a part of Dr. C as a patient, we will make sure that you get the best treatment and, and, and we can follow your, your treatment plan. And we're always going to take the perspective, uh, perception that we're going to help the patients. But long term, you're going to see uh, uh, physical units and hospitals that needs to have this uh, this this kind of function to uh, streamline or to make it more efficient, cost efficient. So, so, uh, and we have those discussion already with, with, with the, the industry. So probably a, a, a big part for Dr. Dottesi going forward. Last question then, how did COVID-19 impact the uptake for your service and is this uptake sustained over time? Uh, was it patient of provider driven? Was it patient of provider driven? Okay, maybe I read that wrong, but but uh, or okay or thank you. Uh, was it patient or provider driven? Good, good question. Uh, no, the, the uptake was obviously uh, we had fifty percent increase in in the the month of May, March, and April. After that, we kind of saw a um, a platform that it stabilized on. It didn't decrease, but it it it, it didn't keep going, and. Uh, We'll see a steady increase from that plateau that we hit, and uh, 
back to uh, you, you have different areas where or or, or different um, uh, time periods. You see in the in, in the the winter time is obviously is picking up, and when it's when it comes to uh, the flu season, then uh, it picks up. Uh, in the spring, uh, it picks up. Uh, you have those different areas and the different timelines when it picks up, and and then it's stabilized and it goes from there. So it's, I would say, in the COVID nineteen, it's the first time we saw an increase from both patients and provider, because the provider kind of shut down a little bit and they were referring to uh, digital solutions for the first time since we started digital healthcare. We've never seen that before, it's, it's, as you probably know, it's been the other way around. But for the first time, we saw a referral from from the provider side, but also from patients. We saw a different kind of patients seeking healthcare that we never seen before. Uh, that we see a demographic that that normally that in the history hasn't used the service as much, used it now frequently, and mm-hmm. it's stabilized st- stabilized on 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 that plateau. And uh, I think we're now. At the end of the summer, and everyone's back at work, and we are gonna see a, a a different uptick. So right now, the volumes is 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 also pointing fairly steep up again. So so it's yeah, it's gonna be interesting to follow near time. Okay, guys, uh, thank you so much for uh, for uh, tuning in and listening. I hope that gave you something. Um, little. Uh, <laughs> First time in in this kind of forum with answering question and and not having the voiceover so so I hope uh, y- you got something out of it. Uh, anyhow, hope you have a, a great weekend and I'd be happy to come back and and share a little bit uh, going forward. So thank you so much. Mm-hmm.